So we've all been playing Tears of the Kingdom religiously now for hours and hours and days and days, but there is still so much to know about this game and these are going to be some tips that i'm going to share with you that have overall helped me i've already done one tips video so if you want to go back and watch that one that one is more for the beginners and things you find out when you first start the game and right now i'm about 50 hours into this game and these are just some more things that i have found out that will help you out immensely in your tears of the kingdom gameplay so we're going to get into these tips if you've never been on this channel before i make Elden Ring content and i make tears of the kingdom content so if that interests you feel free to subscribe that would help out the channel a lot and if you like what you see leave a comment down below also if there's something in this video that you find out that you didn't know leave it down in the comments below and leave a helpful tip for others as well if i missed any so let's get into it so starting out with our tip number one you're going to find a ton of different gems in this game they're going to be scattered all about caves all around the land of hyrule but they have some specific uses for example if you use a sapphire in a very very hot location and fuse it to your shield it's going to help lower your body temperature now if you're in crazy hot places it's not going to help you and nothing's going to help you not even the clothes but if you're in a place where you can regulate your temperature and bring it down a little bit sapphires are definitely going to help you out to get that colder temperature around you and also staying in the same line of gyms regulating your body temperature if you use a ruby in a cold location then you are going to raise your body temperature i have found that i can use the ruby and the cold trousers only with no hat and no armor and i will stay perfectly warm in snowy locations now i will say just like the sapphire not being able to cool you in really really hot locations the ruby is also not going to maintain your body temperature if you're in an extremely cold location so just keep those in mind but i found that very interesting and i thought you guys would as well and moving on to tip number two i had zero idea this was even possible but you can build a fire and throw an acorn on top of it and it will cause an explosion and give you a massive updraft so that you can get into the air quickly or how i use this is if i don't want to climb up a tall cliff face i will just build a fire throw a pine cone in and drift up probably the first three-fourths of the clip face and then use the rest of my stamina to climb up and get to the very, very top. I found this really, really helpful, especially in those areas that you just don't have enough stamina or in those areas that you need to fly really quickly. This is a great option for you. So for tip number three, we're gonna go into the same vein as getting you into the air fast. A lot of times people will use springs to bounce up in the air really, really high to get to where they need to go. However, we don't always have springs on our person. So let's talk about auto build. You can fuse a piece of fruit or a piece of meat or something to a spring and save it to your favorites so every single time you need to go high into the air or you need to get up a cliffside or something along the lines where you need to get really high up, you can pull out this auto build and it will allow you to pull the spring out right there so you never have to worry about if you have a spring in your inventory. You can pull one out, jump right up on it, and you can get into the air quickly without having to worry about going to one of those vending machines to get a bunch of springs. And tip number four is awesome. If you're like me and constantly looking for bomb arrows and constantly running out of bomb arrows, then I have a tip for you. If you get a cannon and you fuse it to a long stick, you have unlimited bomb arrows. As long as you keep your batteries charged, you can shoot bombs over and over and over again and it will never run out. This is a fantastic option for this type of firepower because you are using multiple resources when it comes to just using a bomb arrow. But with this cannon, you're only using battery power, which is replenishable and will last always. And even when it does run out, it's just gonna recharge and you can take this weapon back out and use it again. If you wanna find cannons in one of the dispensers, you're gonna go to the Nakluta Sky area of the Sky Islands and it's gonna be in this far right device dispenser with the steering stick, the small wheel, and the lights. And for tip number five, this is probably one of the most helpful tips that I have found out while playing Tears of the Kingdom because I am one of those people that will always stray away from using two-handed weapons because I can't block. However, due to our absolutely amazing ability Fuse, we can now fuse a shield to a two-handed weapon and block with that weapon and attack at the exact same time. This brings about an entirely different way to play combat-wise, and I really am glad that they thought of everything when it came to the fuse ability. I still overall prefer the sword and board approach, but the fact that you can put a board on your sword is also kind of cool. In tip number six, it is back from Breath of the Wild, the shrine sensor you get from Robbie. You're going to talk to Robbie in Lookout Landing, and he's going to start 
start a quest for you that's going to end up upgrading your Pura pad, and it's going to allow you to get the shrine sensor that Breath of the Wild used when you have to find shrines that you haven't located. How this sensor is going to work is the exact same as it did in Breath of the Wild. The closer you get to a shrine, the louder and louder it's going to beep, and the farther away you get from the shrine, it's going to start to beep less and less. In order to get him to actually go to his lab for you to get this upgrade to your Pura pad, you are going to need to complete one main portion of the storyline. That's one different storyline, whether it's Zora's Domain or Death Mountain, whatever it may be. Complete one portion of that main quest line, and then you go back to Josha, and she is going to allow you to get another quest that's going to be called the Mysteries of the Depths. Once you go down there, complete that quest, come back up, then Robbie will finally move towards his tech lab, and you'll be able to get those upgrades. This is a great quality of life if you're trying to 100% all the shrines, which let's face it, the majority of us are, so make sure to do his quest line reasonably quickly so you can get all these shrines underway. And for tip number seven, we are going to be heading all the way up north into the Akala region to find the horse god. That's right. If you've never heard of this NPC before, apparently it was in Breath of the Wild, but I never figured it out. So I'm going to tell you about it now. If you go to the far upper northeast of Akala, you're going to cross right over into the Bloodleaf Lake, and there's going to be what looks like a fairy fountain there for you. You're going to go ahead and give that fairy fountain one Endura Carrot, and then the horse god is going to appear. This horse god is going to allow you to not only revive any dead horses you may have lost, but you can max out any horse that you have staying at your stables. This way, it doesn't matter what horse you get, you can eventually unlock every single attribute for your horse by just giving different types of food to the horse god, and you can max out a horse 100%. And for tip number eight, this is more of a niche tip for those who want to do it, but for all of the caves in Hyrule, you're going to find these worm creatures or like likes. What you can do if you don't want to fight them or if you just want them to get their critical spot exposed quickly, you can throw a piece of meat at them and they will start gobbling it up, exposing their critical spot, or you can just walk right past them and not worry about them at all. The other thing that you can do is once they're eating the meat, they'll safely eat that meat and you can put a bomb flower down next to them. They'll eat the bomb flower and then explode. And for tip number nine, there's going to come a time in the game where you are going to run into these gloom hands and for the majority of us, you're going to run away as fast as humanly possible because once they grab you, they are going to kill you no matter what you do. But if you can manage to kill them, these guys hold a secret. They are the portal to summoning Phantom Ganon into the world. If you can manage to kill Phantom Ganon, you'll get a few cool items and weapons, and this is definitely a really cool addition that they put into the game. I found the most efficient way to kill these guys is to use shock arrows and bomb arrows, but if you guys know a better way, leave it down in the comments below. And for a very last tip, this is more of a personal preference tip, but you can head over to Hatano Village and you can use the dye shop to change the color of almost any piece of armor that you are wearing. If you have amiibos, you can also change the fabric of your glider. This is a really nice aesthetic addition to the game that they had in Breath of the Wild, but carried over into Tears of the Kingdom. I personally love the white Sheik set. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. How this works is you will use certain items in your inventory to dye your clothes different colors that you may want. After that, after that, you'll just hit accept, and then your clothes will be dyed that color, and you can go back as many times as you want and dye all kinds of different colors on your armor sets. There are really cool armor sets in this game that look awesome, but with a little tweaking, you can make them look exactly how you would like. And guys, that's it. There it is. That is the 10 tips that you may not have known for Tears of the Kingdom. If there are some that I missed, leave them down in the comments below. I'd love to learn from you guys and start a conversation down in the comments. Also, if you're not subscribed yet to the channel, please hit that sub button. It would mean a ton to me. Hit the bell notifications so you guys know when I'm making more content. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I do make Elden Ring content and Zelda Tears of the Kingdom content right now. So if those type of videos interest you, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, guys, stay safe, enjoy the game, and I'll see you in the next one.